Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Perfect. Welcome to our March 4th, 2021 business meeting on Zoom. Remember when we used to hang out and visit after our in-person meetings at the Scottish Rite and the Vets Building, when we would sit and visit and snack and have lunch together? Remember those days? Well, let's do it on Zoom. Thank you to several of our members who love sewing after the February business meeting. They requested that we hang out after every business meeting. So that's every first meeting of the month. So the Zoom team agreed. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Zoom team. So don't go away after the meeting is concluded today because we'll keep our Zoom going and you're welcome to stay, sew, quilt, knit, eat your lunch, or just hang out and visit after the meeting until 2 p.m. Um, kudos to our Zoom, Zoomster Ann Nolan and her Zoom team for monitoring Zoom and keeping it open until 2 p.m. Did I tell you that Elaine Ramirez is now on the Zoom team? She is also our new program chair elect. So thank you, Elaine, for joining the team. And don't forget, just in case you didn't hear anything I said the last two minutes, you're welcome to stay so quilt knit during this meeting as well as afterwards, because we have you all muted. So you're welcome to just carry on with whatever you're doing and sit there and knit and sew whatever until 2 p.m. Special reminder, this business meeting is being recorded and will be posted on our srqg.org website under blog in case you want to view it again later. We, just as a reminder, we record all our business meetings, but we do not record any of our speaker presentations because the speakers own their presentations and we are in contract with them um, to not allow anyone to record them. So this is their livelihood, so let's respect them and not. Um, several people have called and said, can't we see the speaker meeting again? I'm sorry, no. You, it's one of those things you have to watch it the day it's being done. I have a couple of announcements, March 20th. Does anyone know what March 20th is? Raise your hand if you know. It's National Quilt Day. Great news, I talked with Chris Smith at the Press Democrat. He plans to put an article in the March 20th Press Democrat in honor of National Quilt Day. I have um, contacted the president of um, Moonlighters and she has been in contact with the president of the Petaluma Quilt Guild because I haven't been able to get a hold of her. So I'm talking to them this afternoon. We're going to try to put some, some information together about what our quilts do. And hopefully we'll have a nice article in the March 20th news, um, newspaper, the Press Democrat. So what I'm going to ask you is if you have the ability, please hang um, a quilt or two outside your house on Saturday, March 20th. It doesn't, if you don't have a quilt rack, you can use a clothesline or do what I do. I always use um, a fabric, well, actually a flannel back tablecloth. You can buy them a very large size, very cheaply. Usually they're, some of them are discounted. You can put command strips on the shiny side, attach it to your wall. In this instance, I'm gonna put it up on my garage door. I just have to make sure I take my car out first. <laughs> I'll put it up on my garage wall and then I'll pin the quilts to it. So if people drive by, they can see quilts. And so I'm just hoping it doesn't rain or we don't have really windy day that day, but it would be really fun. And he's going to mention that also that a lot of people who have made quilts will be hanging on that day. Let's see, what do we have? Okay, I'll go to community re uh, reports, our 2021 programs workshop by Bonnie Butler Sabal. Lisa Thorpe from the Bishop's Ranch in Hillsburg is our guest speaker on March 18th. Her program is called Photo to Fabric, Design in the Palm of Your Hand. Is that correct, Bonnie? Just shake your head if that's correct. Okay. We did not get enough signups for her workshop, so it was canceled. But don't despair. Guess what we're going to do with that extra day? We're going to have a sew day on Zoom from 10 to 2. So mark your calendars and you're all invited. Make a lunch. We'll take time for... Uh, time out of the out of the day for snacking, 
but um, we're not going to have a meeting. It's just going to be a so day. And I think it'll be really fun, 10 to 2. Upcoming programs, April 8th is Jenny Lyon. And her presentation is Quilting is a Contact Sport. Her workshop is, in is titled Free Motion Quilting. So contact Bonnie if you would like to sign up for this class, which brings a perfect segue into how do we contact Bonnie? Our guild has a wonderful roster. I always print mine out in bright colors so people can see it. it just happens to be green because today seemed to be the green day. So if you need a phone number or an address of a person in the guild, refer to your roster. Jan Andrews handles the guild roster and keeps it updated. We do not post the roster because of confidentiality reasons, but you can contact Jan for a copy. And remember, this is to be used for guild business only. And did you know that there is a wonderful listing towards the end, all alphabetical by first name. So if you know somebody's name is Janet, you can go through and see, look at all the Janets and then see, oh yeah, that's right, it was Janet Shore. You know, if you forget somebody's last name. So I love this because a lot of times I know somebody by first name, I forget their last name and I can go look. We also list our affiliates and our affiliate members of our guild. These are businesses that help support us and honorary life members and merit award winners. So it has a lot of good information on it. Jan sent a message out, I believe it was February 22nd, but I'm going to ask her if she can send it out again to, to the guild asking, you know, saying, if you want a copy of the roster, she will send it back to you. So if you, if you need a roster, Watch for an email, maybe tomorrow or the next day, and you can contact her if you need that. Community quilts. Our community quilts team has been hard at work, and we're going to have a Valley of the Moon Parade of Quilts on Zoom on our meeting April 1st. So they're silent this month because they're very busy, but they'll give us a report next month, a very nice report, and Linda Hooper is helping with that. Right, Linda Super Hooper? Just shake your head. Thank you. Mystery Quilt, March starts the third month reveal of Carol Belke's nine month Mystery Quilt. Carol would like to tell everyone about the Mystery Quilt and where they can find the latest cue. Can you unmute Carol, please? I, I unmuted myself, thank you, Ann. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting better at Zoom. Um, I hope everybody's keeping up with the, qu the quilt blocks. I know I finally caught up with Mark through, uh, excuse me, through February the other day. Um, is anybody having any questions or problems? You can always email me or call me. Um, I get on email early in the morning and in the evening. And often I have my phone, but I don't always have my phone with me. That's probably going to be on my tombstone. She never had her phone with her. But um, is any, if anybody's having any problems, just give me a yell. Uh, the major, that's the largest number of blocks is I think 10, maybe there will be one month that there's 12 blocks that are made. Um, and again, I just say, you know, have fun with it. The scrappier, the, the happier you're gonna be in the end. I like that, the scrappier, the happier. Yes. <laughs> I remember that one. Okay, thank you, Carol. And it's not too late to start from the beginning because all the instructions for month one, two, and three are on the srqg.org website under TSW. Thank you, Linda, for putting it there. It's very easy to find it that way. And I love it. It's got a great big question mark. So you can go right to the question mark and it says mystery quilt. Okay, our welcome committee and baby closet person is Rhonda, and she has a report for us. Okay, let me go find that. Oh, and it's got things here in my way. Ooh. That, okay, here we go. Good morning, Santa Rosa Quilt Guild. It's so wonderful to say good morning, Santa Rosa Quilt Guild. 
I want, my name is Rhonda Denny, and I want to let you know that I um, handle the welcome committee. I do have people that assist me when we're meeting together, but right now it's kind of a one man job or woman job. So I just want to say hello from Santa Rosa Quilt Guild to the new people. And um, last month we had three new members, which is so exciting. I want, my job is to introduce you to programs and um, all the indulging that we can do regarding quilting. There are so many things. We have block of the month, sew a row, technique sharing workshops. Um, we have uh, sew-a-thons, uh, quilt-a-thons, um, rave meetings where we get together and just sew our brains out. Um, so if you have any questions, and even if you're, you've been with us for a while, if you have any questions, I have served in most of the committee, the committees that we have, and um, I have taken dozens of workshops, and I can fill you in on who you might want to reach out to, or perhaps I can reach out for you to someone but uh, my job is to make you feel like you're the only person in the room and that everything is all about you. So um, let's get going with our quilty pleasures. And um, just know that I'm Rhonda Denny. I can be found in the Santa Rosa Quilt Guild member directory. And um, I like to talk, so ask me anything. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rhonda. We have a we have a pet project. Well, it's more than a pet project. Um, I have a dream that to put a baby closet together, and so uh, the baby closet is happening. And uh, the good news is the baby closet has a name now. Um, we thought it was going to be the pediatric closet, but they already have a pediatric closet filled with medical things. Um, so we're just going to call it the baby closet at Lombardi. Um, and in this baby closet um, for age zero to 12 months, um, we are looking for basics. So I just want to show you here. Here's Mary there, and she is modeling some knitting that Sharon Fry did. Mary Bear loves to model. She looks darling. It even has a little hoodie. Um, Debbie Ferris Cole made these beautiful bibs. Look, it's a bouquet of bibs. And this bib pattern can be found on um, SantaRosaQuiltGuild.org under the TSW tab. Um, scroll down until you see Rhonda Denny's community project. Um, last month, my ask was for journals. We had so many beautiful journals come in, um, 33 total, and they are like above and beyond. Look at this. This is so great. Um, a lot of baby clothes came in. And again, these are um, under, you know, size one, I guess, and under. Um, yeah, so lots of people donated to the baby closet. That was wonderful. And this month's ask is for quilted bags. Sharon Fry made this one. It will hold the baby loot. The baby loot consists of um, 36 inch receiving blankets, one side cotton, one side flannel, um, bibs, bibs. Um, mom gets a journal. We've got socks uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff I'm not remembering right now. Uh, oh, here it is. Yes, so I want to uh, tell you how much has been turned in. 16 quilted bags. 30 receiver sets. The receiver sets are the blanket, the cat friend stuffy, 
um, the bibs. Oh, and um, yay, where's my baby hat? I got my knitting out and I made a baby hat after all my years of trying to knit. Anyway, the baby closet is going swell. Um, things can be dropped off at Village Sewing Center for pickup. And also when we get to have our library day and more, or library and more day, um, things can be dropped off there. And I plan on being at the next one, if at all possible. And so I thank you so very much for listening to me, for participating with me in this grand project that will be re-evaluated in one year to see if it's successful or not, and if we can add more to it. So I, I appreciate you all so much and every kindness. Thank you. Thank you, Rhonda. You're doing a great job supporting our community. Our 2021 quilt challenge has been announced by Debbie Ferris Cole. It's in, the, in our newsletter. I'll read a little bit of it. She said, the challenge for 2021 is called Rainy Days. Some rainy day words to inspire you are umbrellas, galoshes, rainbows, puddles, storms, lightning, um, gray clouds, fireplaces, hot chocolate, cuddly quilts, reading books, windshield wipers, water spouts, oopsy bitsy spiders, floods, Noah's Ark. Interpret the theme rainy days however you like and awards will be given like they were this time. So. A quilt can be any size larger than 30 inches by 30 inches. And it's due August, our first meeting in August 2021. So check it out in the newsletter and don't forget to re read the newsletter. Jim Jensen does a fabulous job with our Stitch in Times newsletter. Every month he puts together articles and it's very, very newsy. And he's actually got a brand new section in here um, and it's going to, it's called the Quilt Police, and I think you're going to really enjoy it. So check that out. Okay, Linda Hooper, Unfinished Fabric Objects. Linda, would you like to say a couple words about the UFO challenge? Yeah, sure. So it's uh, that time of the year where we all need to go through our drawers, closets, pull out the UFOs, which are unfinished fabric objects, or your pigs, our products in grocery sacks. So uh, in the past, we have, uh, you have donated $5, which you got back once your project was completed. Since we're doing everything virtual, there is not going to be an exchange of money. So the way this is going to work is that you guys are going to send me your photos. Very important. Please put UFO in the subject line so I know exactly where to put your uh, photo. Include a little snippet of uh, what it is that uh, your project is about and what you are pledging to finish. Your projects need to be turned into me by March 24th. So I can put a little video together and we can show that at our April meeting. And then you are pledging to have those projects finished by our September 2nd meeting. So in lieu of the getting your money back when you finish, what we've decided to do instead is for every project that you finish your name is going to be put in a basket with a, a ticket and we are going to be drawing uh, lots of fun prizes to win so um, it's helpful if you uh, have a picture of yourself along with the picture of your quilt so that we can uh, know who you are and um, don't forget to write a little snippet along with your project. Great thank you Linda. That's it. Yep, we expect everybody to participate. <laughs> You'll be flooded. <laughs> Thank you. And did you all see that cute little leprechaun uh, quilt she had hanging up in the background? That was adorable. Okay, block of the month, Carol Lemoyne. Take it away, Carol, as only you can do. Hello, I'm Bernie Sanders. All right, I'm not, but 
it fits the theme for March block of the month. Hi everybody, uh, Carol Lemonnier, half of the block of the month committee. Jody Bellenhausen is at a distance in Windsor, kind of far. And we are now introducing to you the March block of the month, which is called March Mittens. We had to do mittens because of the Bernie Sanders meme, meme and uh, the uh, tech, it was snowing in Texas of all places. So we're not through with winter. Don't worry, next month will be beyond winter. So we're going to do mittens this today. And I know that uh, you do not have instructions on the website as of now. I will have had given you an email blast telling you make sure you have your piece of paper and a pencil so that you could write along with me during this video presentation as to what you need to make the block. Eventually the instructions will be on our website. So come on over here and I will give you instructions. These are going to be a little bit slower than normal because this will be the first time you will receive um, what you need. This is the entire block. There are two mittens, a right and a, a right and a left with a center. These are the things that you need. You need for A, four one and a half by one and a half top corners. F two each of the one by one. G two each of the one and a half by three and three quarters. H you need two one and a half by seven and a half inches. I you need four two by two. K you need four one and a half by two. That's the side of the cuff. L, you need two each of the four and a half by five and a half. And M is the center of the block, two and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. That's the background. The background should be light, any light color. And then of course the body of the mitten can be any color that you want. There are two colors to the mitten. There's the body of the mitten and then the contrast. For the body of the mitten, B is two of the two by three. D is the two, three and a half by four and a half, which is the body of the mitten. And for the thumb, which is E, you have two one and a half by four and one quarter inch block or rectangle. The contrast is two of the two by three and J are two one and a half by two and a half inches. That's the cuff of the mitten right here. Now I've written down the instructions. They're kind of um, um, primitive, but um, shut up. They're primitive, but they get the job done. So the first thing you do is you draw diagonal lines on block A, F, and I. I've shown this over here. These are the A's, the F, which is the top of the thumb, and the I, which goes on the bottom of the mitten. So the first thing you do is you sew a onto B on both corners. So here we have a sample of this. You have, this is A, which are your one and a half by one and a half inch squares. You sew it on the diagonal, you cut and you flip. Then you add your contrast piece and you add the bottom of the mitten. <laughs> Is that, are you okay? Okay. No, it, it's out of focus. Well, let's go farther back. All right. 
Now we are going to go on to the thumb. And remember, you need two thumbs. And one has to be the right thumb and one has to be the left thumb. So you again do the cut, flip, and sew, cut, and flip method. You have two little um, squares that are one inch that are uh, the F section. And you put it on the outside of the thumb, right? On the outside right here and right here, okay? Then going down here, um, see how this little background is towards the body of the mitten? And on the right side, the background of the thumb is towards the body of the mitten. So you gotta make sure one is left and one is right. And that is not in the instructions because that takes up too many words. And uh, then you'd get all confused and I don't know how to write those words. So keep looking at the pictures and you'll figure it out because you're smart. Okay, once you've made your thumb, a left and a right, then you add the top background, which is L, no, which is G, G. So you sew F on the corner of E, you cut and flip, you attach G to the top of the thumb, and then you add H, which is the one and a half by seven and a half inch to the opposite side of the mitten. So if this is your mitten, then H goes on the opposite side. And if this is your right mitten, H goes on the opposite side of the mitten. Now you've got your body of the mitten done. There's only, I, there's only two more uh, steps to do. And only one more time where we have to draw diagonal lines and that is over here, over there. So you've got your body of your mittens and then you have your two by two inch squares. You draw a line diagonally, you sew, you cut, you flip them. And then now you've got a mitten. You add your cuff by adding the two side uh, triangles to the cuff you add them to your mitten. That's pretty good. We're almost near the end. Finally, the last step, you attach L, which is this four and a half by five and a half inch block. You attach L to the bottom of the left uh, mitten and L to the top of the right mitten. Okay, so one is on top of each other. And then finally you attach M to the center of the mitten. And lo and behold, you have now completed your pair of March mittens. Very good, not difficult. This is more wordy than normal because we don't have the instructions yet. If you have any questions, you could always email me. I will answer you. And if you want copies of these instructions or the list of what you need, uh, you can email me and I'll take a, cop a, a picture of that and I'll email it to you if you want. And maybe that will allow you to make them as soon as possible. Uh, because there is a delay in getting this on the website, we're not gonna have the drawing in the beginning of April, rather we'll have the drawing the beginning of May. So don't panic, don't worry, um, you'll get these done. Hopefully you'll make a lot of them. Remember to make one for yourself, keep it, because now you're getting a wardrobe. You should have at least three after March, and eventually by the end of the year, you'll have 12. Now, if you win, these mittens, you might ask yourself, why do I want mittens in a tire quilt? Well, I've already seen on uh, Etsy or Spoonflower, there is fabric with good old Bernie um, there sitting in his chair with his mittens on. You could add, you could buy that and add it to your quilt 
if you win the blocks. And then who knows, maybe a hundred years from now, your quilt will be an antiques roadshow and they're gonna wonder who the heck is this guy and why is this quilt being made? They'll do the research and they'll think, man, the people in 2021 were really weird and were easily amused, which we are. So that is our block of the month for March. And so uh, thank you very much for doing it. Um, and on behalf of the block of the month, and on behalf of the hospitality, I want to extend um, my wishes to you, my good wishes to you. Um, I know uh, the hospitality uh, have gotten their vaccines, at least one, if not two. Uh, I got mine today. And so by the time we finally meet, I hope I will be fully vaccinated and we will be able to at least give virtual hugs and virtual kisses and give maybe pretend coffee and donuts. Uh, we'll hang out with the welcoming committee maybe and just say hello. And then hopefully, hopefully, uh, we will not only meet, but we will be able to share everything uh, with each other. Until then, thank you. See you in April. Thank you, Carol. I hope all of you got every single step and have it written down um, because we don't know when those um, instructions are gonna be posted, but hopefully it'll be soon. So thank you, Carol. That was quite amusing and quite self-explanatory. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Sewer Row with Tony Anderson. Let's see what, what Sewer Rows are available for adoption. Okay, here we go. Hi, Tony Anderson here with Sewer Row. I just wanted to show you the couple of rows that have been turned in this past couple of weeks and to remind you to go out to the website and see if you can find an orphan to adopt. Here we go. So number 22 was returned by Elaine Ramirez. This is called Van Gogh Love. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can appreciate some of the beautiful workmanship she did on these irises, wow. And number 26 is called Girlfriends for Life. These are pretty cute. The third row was returned by Kathy Conover. So go out to our website. The SOA rows are located on the far right-hand side. Um, so, you know, pick out sew a row and browse until you find something that tickles your fancy to take home. Thanks. Hello, Tony Anderson here, your sew a row chair. How many of you guys remember 2020? Yeah, I'm betting a lot of us do. Well, one of the strange things that happened in 2020 is that we quit meeting, which means our sew row program and our sew rows got uh, behind. And so what happened is we have several sew rows that are holdovers from 2020. Those are the sew rows that I'd like to highlight today and ask for your help uh, to help me get these completed so that we can give them away at the end of 2021. So if you are attracted to one of these sew rows, I invite you to just drop me a message through the e email link below, and I will put your name on them and arrange to get them to you. Okay, thank you for your help. Here we go. The first one is number two, and it's called It's a Dog's Life. That one needs two more rows. Number four is Sewing Room Sue. It also needs two more rows.
Number five is called kittens, and it needs two more rows. Number 14 is called Sunshine and Stars, and it needs three more rows. This is number 19 called Birds in a Basket. It needs two more rows. And number 20 is Be Happy and it needs three more rows. So help me get these orphans completed. I'm willing to go above and beyond. I can drop off and pick up. I'm willing to put your name on it as reserved. Um, so let me know. You can reserve it if you just email me right now. Now is your chance to adopt one of these beautiful orphans. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, let's get those solo rows off and running. Let's go to uh, Linda Super Hooper again with Show and Tell. We have more beautiful quilts to show you. Thank you, Linda. That was fabulous. And I love the music. Love, love, love the quilts and the music. So thank you for putting together this beautiful display for us. Next, we have a uh, seven minute video created by Brenda Cobran, giving you important information about the get, uh, Days for Girls project and instructions on how to create Girls for uh, Days for Project packets. So let's hear from Brenda. And if you're interested, and you can call Brenda afterwards. Hi, I'm Brenda Cobren. I'm a member of the Guild and also the leader of the Central Santa Rosa Days for Girls team. We are part of an international organization that makes reusable, washable menstrual kits for girls and women around the world that don't have access to menstrual supplies. The organization also offers health education and they work to break social stigmas around menstruation that limit opportunities for girls and women. 
So many of us that live in privileged societies don't realize that girls living in less advantaged parts of the world often end up dropping out of school simply because they don't have access to menstrual supplies uh, and, or a way to manage their menstrual health. So they stay home from school during those days, they miss lessons, and ultimately can't pass the exams and can't continue on in school. So this is very limiting for many girls around the world. Receiving a Days for Girls menstrual kit that she can use for three to five years can literally change a girl's life and open up opportunities that wouldn't otherwise be available to her. Days for Girls has been in existence for over 12 years and they have collectively delivered over 2.1 million kits in over 175 countries in the world. Our local team has been going for about three and a half years and we have sent out 333 kits and we are continuing on. So let me show you the kit. This is what the kit looks like when it's all packed up and it's labeled, it has a size on there. Um, and this is how they would get it. And then let's see, inside the drawstring bag is this packet here and I'll show you what's in that. So they get a instruction card that shows them how to use the kit and also this chart to help them keep track of their monthly cycle. And they get two pair of underwear because most of these women and girls don't even have access to underwear. And they get a washcloth. Um, and this is what we call the transport bag. It's made out of um, polyurethane laminate, PUL fabric that's waterproof. And you see this one is surged. And then the, these are what we call the liners. And there's eight of these in each kit. They're made out of 100% cotton flannel. And it's kind of like, sort of looks like a little diaper. Um, and that is actually literally the menstrual pad. So they get eight of them and they fit inside this thing called the shield. So, oh, and they get a little soap as well. So the shield is the thing that holds the pads or the liners as we call them. And it is made out of quilter's cotton on the outside, but it has a layer of PUL on the inside to make it waterproof. And it has these, um, plastic snaps. So that's actually what snaps around the underwear. And then these liners fit inside of it. And you can put uh, one, two, or even three of them inside there, depending on the monthly flow. Uh, and you'll notice that all of these fabrics are mostly dark colors, bright colors, feminine, uh, stain hiding things. Um, we can use some lighter colors on the drawstring bags that hold everything, but mostly we, we want to stay with stain hiding things. Um, and the prints are very important. Um, we don't want anything with words or faces or characters or eyes or animals. Days for Girls is very specific about that. Oh, and this little thing here, we call this the pod, which stands for Personal Object of Dignity. And it's literally a shield with um, one or two liners inside. Um, and we fold it up like that to show them that they can have this little thing um, that looks kind of like a little purse or something and stick it in their back pocket and go to school with it. So. That's what's in the kits. Thank you, Brenda. If you're interested, contact Brenda and her contact information is in the roster. When we were meeting in person at the end of each business meeting, that would be the first meeting of the month, many of the members would gather around in the back of the room and view um, someone demonstrating a new technique or technique that they wanted more help with. Since we're on Zoom, we can record and show you our technique sharing workshops, our TSWs. 
So today is a stitch and flip video prepared by Betty Upchurch quite a while ago. Um, but I, this is just going to be really interesting to watch. So let's see what Betty has for us. Good morning. Today I'm going to try to show you an easy flip and sew method that might eliminate some of the quilting for our community quilts. And practicing at home, I have learned that if it may take, it seems like it takes a long time, but if I consider all of it together, this is about twice as fast as doing it our old method. The first thing you're going to do is take your, your kit, your little charm squares, and you're going to sew them together in strips six strips with eight blocks in it. And then you're going to lay them out the design you want, and you're going to number them, one, two, three, four, five, six. You're gonna lay them off to the side. Then you're going to get your batting and your backing, and cut that out, and you're going to lay it out where they are evenly matched. You're going to fold it in half, such as this, line up your batting so that you, it's good and even, Crease it down the middle. You can press it with an iron or you can press it with your fingers. Once you press it this way, you're going to fold it in half again and press it. It might be a little bit awkward, but you can see kind of where it is. Anyway, you only need it for a short time. Open it up. And you can Kind of see where your creases are. And you're going to take number three or four, either one, and you're going to lay that seam, your, your number one thing, right on the, the crease. You're making sure that you have plenty of fabric on each end of that row for your borders. You're gonna lay number four down. You're gonna take number five. One way of marking it to make sure that you mark it, um, you can do it with pens, or the easiest thing is just take a pencil and mark the number on the back. You're gonna take number five then, lay it on top of it, and if you're doing a pattern with a design, you may want to lay it side by side to make sure that your pattern is following through the way you want it to. Line it up, making sure that your seams are cradling each other, you want to make sure that when you press it, your seams are going in the opposite direction. At that time, you're going to have it laid on there the way you want it. You're going to pin, matching up your seam allowance, and you want to go all the way through your batting and your backing. Pin it as many times as you need. If you need to pin every seam, that's fine. If you don't need to, then just pin every other one. Once you get it pinned, you're going to take it to the sewing machine and you're going to sew all the way through, all four layers, your quarter inch seam. When you finish with that, you're going to flip it over and press it open. And then you're going to take number six and you're going to do exactly the same thing. Lay it down to double check it, make sure it's where you, the one you want there. Lay it on the seam, pin it down, sew it, and flip it over. Then you're going to do number three. Lay it out, pin it on, flip it over, pin it on, sew it, and then you're going to do the same thing with number two and number one. Okay, stop the machine. Okay. Here's another sample showing where you've got your, your pattern and your design lined up. And we have our blocks all sewn down onto our batting, and I'm going to start with the borders. And the number one thing you do is you start with your small border, and you line it up on there, cut it the length of your strips. You want two of them the length of your strips. You're going to pin it on each side. You're going to do the same thing, pin it down, sew it, 
flip it, and then press it. Once you get that done on one side, then you, you do the same thing on the other side. Make sure that you it has been cut the same length. And probably, okay. Once you have both of your sides done, then you cut and you do your ends. So on your insides. Measure them first though. I have not measured these, but measure them the width that you want them and make sure that the top one is the same width as the bottom one. And then you're going to sew those on, pin them, sew them on, flip them, and then press them. Once you get your small border on there, you're going to add your larger border and it's basically the same thing. You're going to measure the length of them and then sew on your outer border. Okay, let me stop. Okay, once you have your, your side borders on, you're going to do your top border, the width of that, and it's going to go all the way across the top and to the edge of that. Once you get all four of your borders sewn down, flip them over and press them, then we're going to proceed. That pretty much has got your quilt done. You're ready for your binding. So I'm going to go to another step and show you um, how it makes it really simple to put your binding on there without sewing it as a, as a separate piece. Okay. Okay, this one, the sample here is completed as far as all of the sewing is, has been done. The squares are sewn down, the borders are put on, and you now take the scissors or a ruler and cut down approximately three-fourths of an inch outside of this outer border. When you're finished with that, you can trim off your backing to be long enough so that you can fold it over and form your binding. And then we're going to and then we simply top stitch that down, and it will be quilted. Um, before you, yeah, I what I did was on this one was I got it all trimmed, and then I folded it down and I pinned it, and then I took the iron and I pressed it. That simply made it easier for me to sew a nice straight line. And okay. Now then, to, to get this miter, beautiful miter corner when you're folding this over, you're just going to have to come to the class and I will show you in person because it's a little more complicated to do it on the camera. Except for the sewing down the, the edges, here is your finished product. And then the back of it, you can see the quilting. And for community quilts, according to the batting uh, recommendations, that's all the quilting that you need. If you want to add more later, it's certainly easy enough to go back and do squiggly lines across the squares or do the something, you know, crisscross right in the middle or do whatever and do some fancy stitching in the edge. But it's laying nice and flat and you don't have to worry about all the wrinkles and everything. So I found it to be quite successful myself. Okay, I hope you have learned something and that you find this to be very successful and that we can produce a lot more of the community quilts with a lot less effort. Thank you, Betty. Thank you, Lori Biondo, for bringing that presentation to us. She is our uh, chair for uh, Technique Sharing Workshops. Sorry, that was me trying to stop YouTube. <laughs> okay anyway um anyway thank you betty for allowing us to show your stitch and flip video we have a few upcoming events uh, march 12th is the second part of sandra mullen's workshop for those of you who are signed up and you'll if you haven't gotten the email already you will soon with all the details march 18th is our speaker meeting with lisa thorpe from bishop's ranch march 19th is an open sew day 10 to 2 March 20th is National Quilt Day, so hang those quilts outside your home, and hopefully we'll have a nice article in the newspaper. So today's meeting was sponsored by Green Beer and the Zoom team. 
<laughs> meeting adjourned at 10.58 a.m. And stay tuned, go, don't go away because we get to sew until two o'clock. So we'll take a short break for lunch at noon. So you can grab a snack or, snack or have lunch then, but um, I've enjoyed it all and hope that you continue to stay. Thank you. Janelle? Yes. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that the pattern for the mittens that Carol demonstrated is on the website. I put it up this morning and uh, so you can go under the uh, block of the month uh, page and it's there. Thank you, Linda. I hope you all heard that, the um, Carol Lemoyne's pattern for the mittens is online now. So thank you for doing that. So thank you to everybody who contributed today and let's sew.